Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I am Amalgamash, and today I wanted to take a look at the game gallery included with RPG developer Bakin. The game gallery is located in the top menu when you first open the engine, and it allows you to explore projects created by the Smileboom team that demonstrate what kinds of games you can make with Bakin. You can also playtest the games from this menu without having to open the projects in the editor first. You can edit any of the projects that you want freely after you open them in read-only mode. That means your changes won't be saved, though, unless you do save the project as a diff file. This way, you can use the included projects as templates for your own games. So let's go ahead and check out Orb Stories. When you first open one of these template projects, you do get a window that tells you about restricted editing mode. In restricted editing mode, changes you make are not saved. If you wish to create another game using this game data, please save it under a different name before using it. Note that the game in the game template contains a large amount of materials, so copying it may overwhelm your hard disk space. Now we have the opportunity right now to go ahead and click save as and edit which will allow us to save this as a different project file and then all of our changes will be saved or we can just go ahead and hit ok to proceed into the read only project however if you hit ok and then change your mind about wanting to save this as a different project you can go into file and then in the file menu you can save it as a new project name and then your changes will be saved so we can click on map list to see all of the different maps that are included with this particular project file and kind of get an idea on how the Smile Boom team were able to create these beautiful maps. We can go ahead and pin that map list, that way it'll stay open instead of continuing to collapse whenever I open a new map. Some of these maps are resource intensive and they are pretty big, so opening them may take a while. That's going to be dependent on your CPU and GPU specs. I want you to take a good look at this map and how it was made. There is a ton of blank space in the back here and some scenery right here and it kind of seems like when we zoom in we're just going to be really using one side of this town and there's good reason for that by the way if this town looks familiar you'll see why in just a minute when i go to the desert map probably pretty apparent at this point that this is the game that is used in the rpg developer bakin trailer these are what the maps look like in the map editor for this exact game and you actually have access to changing all of the properties of these maps and building your own maps from them Here's the Scorching Cave map. Temperature's going up just from me looking at this. I'd like to test play this game, so we can click the test play button or hit P on the keyboard. And this is Orb Stories. Now we actually have access to do two different methods of play testing our games, and I will show you the other one in just a moment so you can see what I mean. But for now, let's click New Game. Here's our beautiful intro made entirely with RPG developer Bakin. Ken, can you hear me, Ken? Good, I guess my voice has been heard. Ken. My name is Tria, and I am the Queen of the Spirits, the Guardian of Harmony in this world. Now the source of our power, the Spirit Orbs, are in danger at the hands of the evil dragon, Tamazusa. Ken, a child of the Spirit Orbs, in accordance with the ancient fate, you must depart. You must protect the Spirit Orbs from the hands of evil. I'm counting on you, Ken. And here's Ken's house. Check out this camera work. Hey, are you listening to me? She says. Why are you so spaced out all of a sudden? Are you sick? The characters and the objects that are kind of in the same plane as the characters are in focus and everything behind them and in front of them is out of focus. That's awesome. What, have you been talking to the Spirit Queen? Are you still sleeping? Mr. Cyrus said to come as soon as you're ready. Go now. So now we have control of Ken and we're able to walk around this beautiful house and we can see brand new assets as well as some old assets from Smile Game Builder, including this clock. And it looks pretty great in this engine. You can see that the light is playing off of the gold trim material of the model. When I walk near the window, the light actually plays off of my sprite. When I walk into the background, the objects that are in the background come into focus and we can see their high detail. And when I walk into the foreground, those objects become blurred out and the foreground objects become in focus and you can see their detail. That is so, so cool. This is definitely what everybody's talking about when they say that you can make a, an Octopath Traveler type game. Let's go ahead and go outside. And now we see that we are in Nate Village. And it's very obvious that this is the exact project file used in the RPG developer Bakin trailer. This is camera work that is done in the engine for the game and not by any kind of video editor. Well, I guess I better be headed to the church. So now we can see that map that we were looking at in the map editor, and you can kind of see why it was so big with all of that dead space. We can see the stream going all the way back to that forest. That bird just pushed me. <laughs> Uh, and we don't see the rest of that empty space. So that was really just to create this beautiful depth of field and this sort of illusion that this place is much bigger than it seems. This stream right here that separates us from the foreground and the out of focus 
scenery in the foreground that is just beautiful. It really gives a magical touch to this map. And as I continue to move closer to the waterfall, you can kind of hear the roar of the water getting louder. And then it gets quieter as I move away. Now, if we stand right about here, I'm going to explore the options in the upper left corner of the screen. We have a reset button, of course, which I don't want to use. But in our options menu, we have options for window size, and we can choose to run this in full screen. And by the way, F4 is still a hotkey for running games in full screen. We have a performance meter with none, type one, two, and three. And when we click it, we can see some very advanced details running at the bottom of the screen. This way you can check the performance of your game. You can actually see how much processing each of these properties takes between shadow, reflection, light, fog, transparency, bloom, depth of field, UI, and other on your GPU. And on your CPU, you can see what loads affect that as well on the bottom right hand side. That is amazing. We can check type two and then we get a different visualization and type three. It wasn't even necessary for us to have any type at all. Rather, I don't think that would have been a game breaking feature to leave out, but Smileboom actually gave us three different methods to check the performance of our games. We also have our debug window, and this is very similar to the window that appears when you hit F5 in Smile Game Builder. You are allowed to change the values of any of the variables during runtime for playtest reasons. You can also check different options. You can disable encounters, pass through events, have max abilities in battles, and always max HP and MP in battles. You can also change the level of your casts. If you go to your logs, you can see all of the runtime events that are happening right now, and you can toggle which ones you can actually watch. And when you stop these, you can actually reflect that in your test play. We'll turn them all back on and go to system status. And this is telling us what system flags are on, including whether or not we can save, have access to the menu, whether monsters appear, and whether the party train is on or off, whether we have run and jump enabled. <clears throat> we can close that. We do have the ability to rotate the camera while in this mode. It's kind of surprising. I didn't think we'd get that. I mean, I didn't think it would be made as a default option. F6 will bring up the cast parameter check view, and that lets us see all of the stats of our characters. So we can actually see Ken's level, his experience, what class he is, his maximum HP, his poison damage. If this gets hard to read, you can change the size of the cells, his reward rate, item obtaining rate, his attributes against lightning, holy, dark, and so on. We can actually view the collision while we are in this mode. If we turn that on, we can see absolutely everything. And I have the ability to click and drag with the right mouse button to change that camera angle and see things precisely. We can see the capsule collision on the walking dog and our own player. So we can see that the collisions have been greatly improved. And I mean, greatly exponentially over Smile Game Builder's ability. Now that's all of the collision. We can actually toggle the terrain collision, objects collision, and player and events collision. And we can hide them all as well. So if we just look at player and event collisions, here's what we can see. You can see the collisions for all of the events as well. I really quickly wanted to look at the menu UI for this game. So if we right click, the menu will come up. You can also hit escape to get this to come up. And the menu actually responds to mouse clicks. So we have access to use of the mouse finally by default right out of the box. I'll just double click on skills and then double click on the cast face. And we can see that I have power boost and assassin blade. We'll right click in order to back out of those menus and then click on picture book. We have no completion rate. It's awesome to see this included with the game and know that we have that at our disposable if. <laughs> it's awesome to see that we have access to a picture book or a bestiary of sorts if we want to use this sort of tool for our games as well. All right, so I'm going to close out of this test play. And then I'm really curious what this area looks like. So I'm going to make this the starting point and then test play again. And we are in the scorching cave. Luna, who I guess has joined our party, says there's something in that wall. The buried stone tablet says, those of you who possess the spirit stone that holds the power of the Ifrit, you are recognized as messengers of the queen of spirits. We can use the keyboard or controller to move the camera and search the cave wall. And we actually have the ability to use the right mouse button click and drag to change the camera view 
during our gameplay. It's not even a test play function, it's just normally included with our game. That is awesome. I just stepped on this moving platform and it looks like encounters are enabled while I'm on the platform. We're gonna escape and let ourselves stay on this platform. Look at that, so you're able to come into this map and grab that platform for your own game if you'd like to have a moving platform in your games by default. Open up the beautiful chest and get the ancient key. All right, that's about all the time I have to check out Orb Stories. We'll give this little game a proper playthrough in the near future. I hope you all enjoyed and or learned something about the engine. If you found this video helpful, I hope you'll consider liking the video. Comment down below anything you'd like, and please subscribe if you'd like to see more RPG developer Bakin tutorials and content overviews. I'll see you next time. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye for now.